You are holy and blameless before the Lord because of who you are in the Spirit. That is good news, folks. But unless you believe it, it's not going to do you any good. You have to believe this stuff. You have to say, yes, I hear it, I understand it, and I'm just going to go ahead and believe it. Like, what have you got to lose? Hello and good morning. I want to welcome you to Arrested and Free. My name is Julianne Harris and praise God, I've been arrested by God's goodness, His grace, His love, and His mercy. And therefore, I've been set free from fear, pain, anxiety, discontentment, and all the negative things that can happen to us in life, I've been set free from. Today is February the 5th in the year of our Lord, 2023. And I am delighted that you have tuned in yet again for this series. So, you know, the the whole purpose behind this series, I want to just keep reiterating the basis scripture for this series. <clears throat> and the basis scripture is in Romans, it's found in Romans chapter 1. Whoops. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, For I, and this is Paul talking to the Romans, writing a letter to the Romans, and he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The power of the gospel of Jesus Christ is absolutely amazing. And that's what the whole idea is in this series, is I want to um, get us to be rock solid in our foundational beliefs, because that's where the power is at. Listen, the power is at being having a foundation that is steady. So, and when the storm comes, because guess what? The storm's going to come. But if your foundation is secure, you stay, you stay strong, you stay steady, you stay... Um, you stay uh, unharmed, unscathed during the storm. Because I'm here to tell you a storm is coming and it looks different for everybody. Maybe we all, maybe some of us will suffer the same storm. Maybe some of us will suffer different storms, but the storm's coming. And that's the beauty of the parable that Jesus was talking about. Two men built their house on the beach, built their house on the sand. One man built it on the sand, the other one built it on a firm foundation. And it says, when the storm came, <laughs> he didn't say, oh, just believe on me and there'll be no more storms. No, the reason for that is because God put everything into motion when he created this earth. And with the fall of man came corruption, came death. God didn't create death. Death came with the fall of man. And so, you know, and the author of death is our enemy who is out to steal, kill, and destroy according to John 10, 10. So my point is, is that we live in a fallen world. Bad things happen to good people. Bad things could happen to you. And, and while that's, you're like, oh my goodness, that's so depressing. No, it's live a little while. And so if you're going through something too, I want you to be encouraged that other people go through stuff too. So, you know, it's just like the enemy to want to get you separated from the pack to think, oh, only I, you know, that's what happened to Elijah when he goes, he sees one of the greatest victories of his entire life. And then he runs away from a note from a woman and he's in this cave and God's like, God comes to him and he's like, Elijah, what are you doing here? And Elijah was like, oh, I, only I am the only one that follows you, Lord. And it was a lie. He knew the truth. It wasn't true. And, and so I'm here to tell you today, if you're going through something, you're not the only one that's going through something. And so what, <clears throat> should that make you feel better? Yeah, somewhat. But on the other, on, in the same respect, reach out to somebody. There is somebody in your life that has gone through what you're going through. There is somebody in your life that is going through something that will encourage you and say, listen, yeah, this sucks, but let's get through it together. So that's for somebody that's watching. Um, but I just want to encourage you that this, there is power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what I want us to understand, the power that Paul had the audacity and the confidence to say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
for it is the power of God unto salvation. This is the power, the gospel that is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, the one who came to earth as a man, died on the cross for our sins, and was raised again on the third day. He is our salvation. This gospel and proclaiming this gospel is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and to the, and also to the Greek. So nobody is excluded. You don't have to have gone to church your whole life in order for this to work for you. Likewise, you don't have to have never been churched in your life for this to work for you. I think sometimes it's more difficult when you have lived religion and, uh, and the mess of religion and law-based mentality, self-righteous mentality. Um, I think sometimes it's more difficult because you have to unlearn a bunch of stuff <laughs> before you can just accept the truth. But like I mentioned last week, I'm walking with someone who's never been churched and they are just believing. Like their heart has been radically changed and they are just believing and the power is working in them. It is changing their life and it's absolutely profound. And, and so that's where I'm like, okay, I want to share this with others because I think sometimes in our Christian circles, we think that we have stuff figured out, but we're not experiencing the power that is therein. <laughs> we're not experiencing the power. And why is that? It's because we don't understand it. We don't have it um, settled and in the basement level of our belief system to where it's our foundation. We don't have these foundations figured out. And so last week I was talking about salvation itself right? It's absolutely amazing. And, and Jesus even said himself, he was like, yeah, he's like, you know, notwithstanding, this was out of Luke chapter 10. He's like, notwithstanding, rejoice not in this, that you have power over, over, uh, the serpents and the scorpions and nothing shall by any means harm you. Don't rejoice in that. He said, yet rejoice in this, that your names are written down in heaven. And he's saying, you're, the fact that you are going to be born again and that you can spend all eternity in the presence of pure love, that is what we rejoice about, you guys. That is what we rejoice about. The other stuff is just a byproduct of our names being written in heaven, that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, it tells us in Ephesians. Praise God. So this is the most foundational truth. It's the most important decision of your life. And unless you make that decision, you won't experience the rest of the foundations that I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just want somebody out there, if you are not sure that you are saved, that you are born again, you can do that right now. And all you have to do is it says, when we confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, and when we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And so when you confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord, that he is your sacrifice for your sin, that he is the only way that you can have relationship with God. When you just confess that, and then you believe in your heart that he died on the cross for your sins and God raised him from the dead, you are saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. If you believe it in your heart, and then it says, and confession is made unto salvation. And then you speak it out with your mouth. It's a done deal. You are in the kingdom of God. And if you are doing that for the first time, I would love to hear about it. So please send me a message or, or post a comment here. Um, or send me a message at 970-919-0459. Or send me a messenger message on Facebook uh, at Arrested and Free. So that's the number one foundation. And that is the most miraculous miracle that ever was or ever will be. That's the most, you know, it's interesting to me that there's certain denominations that don't believe that miracles are for, day, for today. Do you understand that you being born again is a miracle? I mean, like, it's totally ridiculous. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm here to... <laughs> to Maybe step on some of your religious toes, and I'm not trying to, but listen, the gospel steps on religion's toes, and uh, <clears throat> and so I won't apologize for it, because that because it is. The gospel of Jesus Christ, it is the power of God unto salvation in every area of your life. 
No matter what you're needing salvation in, no matter what area you may be struggling in or being attacked in, it is only the gospel of Jesus Christ that will give you freedom. So let's start with the first foundation. And this for me was absolutely, there was two things, well, three, well, there's so much that plays into this, but the very first time, you guys, that I heard the grace of God, I heard that God is not mad at me, that God is not disappointed in me, that God is not upset with me. That is absolutely amazing. That was a game changer to me, but I couldn't understand why until I heard spirit, soul, and body. So let's talk about this because I, um, probably a year, year and a half ago, I did a really extensive teaching on spirit, soul, and body, but I want you to know and understand for those of you that are new subscribers, um, I'm going to try to unpack this as best as possible. And we're going to stick here for a while because we have to know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. And we have to know it to the point that we can explain it to others. You know, if you go and, and you are encouraging or you're wanting to share the, <clears throat> the gospel of Jesus with someone, let me take a drink real quick so that my throat doesn't get scratchy. If you're wanting to share the gospel with someone and you want to lead them into becoming saved, into being born again, and then they're like, well, what do you mean being born again? And so, you know, Jesus, Nicodemus even asked Jesus, like, <clears throat> how can a man be born again? Does he go back into his mother's womb? Ew, right? And Jesus said, no, what's born of the flesh is the flesh and what's born of the spirit is the spirit. So you are born in your body and that's your first birth, but your spirit must be born again because you are a three part being. <clears throat> so when we talk about being saved or being born again, that is what gets saved is your spirit. Your spirit is a new creation in Christ Jesus. So number one, you are a spirit. That is the supernatural part of you. Listen, when, when you die here on earth, your spirit doesn't die. Your spirit just leaves your body. Okay. Some people don't even know that. I never understood that. Like, how does that work? Like when I die, how do I end up in heaven? Well, because your spirit never dies, folks. It's pretty amazing. But when your body, so there's a three part being, so there's your spirit. That is the life source. That is God breathed into the nostril of Adam. And that is where life came. The spirit within you is from is, is the life source. Listen, that's why, um, you know, you can, scientists can maybe clone something, but they can't give it life like that. Okay. And so that is, a, you are a spirit. That's who you are. That spirit is going to live forever from now until the end of eternity. And that's not, I guess that's kind of like an oxymoron because there is no end to eternity. You are going to live for eternity whether you believe on Jesus or not. So if you believe on Jesus, you are, you are living for eternity in the presence of God himself, in the presence of pure love. If you do not believe on Jesus, you are spending it in hell and fire and eternal torment, completely separated from God and from love and from anything good. You are going to live forever. Your spirit will live forever, period. Let's just take Jesus and all this stuff out of the out of the way. Well, you can't really take him out of the way because unless you want to spend eternity eternity in fire and brimstone and hell and burning and torment and completely separate from anything good, you have to believe on Jesus because your spirit is going to live forever. You know, I remember this friend that I had in Louisiana, and we would have this conversation and. Uh, he believed that when we die, we just, we're just done. We just cease to exist. We're just in the ground for forever. And I was like, no, see, but I didn't understand this spirit, soul, and body. Anyways, I was like, no, you, you are going to spend it either in heaven or in hell. And, and so we would go back and forth and ultimately he's like, well, I guess we'll see. And I, I said, yeah, I guess we'll see you know, which is really sad to me. Um, anyways, because I'm here to tell you, if you die and you don't know God, if you don't believe on Jesus, 
you are still going to spend eternity. It's just going to be somewhere other than in the presence of pure love. So moving on, you are a spirit. That's who you are. You have a soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. This is how everything that causes you to be you. This is your personality. This is your, your pattern of thought. This is your determining factor. I'll get to that, but that is your soul, your spirit, or your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions, and your body is your body. I mean, it's very clear, right? Your body is where you taste, smell, see, hear, um, touch, right? All your senses are so real in your body. And that is generally where we as humans, we as Christians, that's where we reside most of the time. <clears throat> and that's why we live an unfruitful life. <laughs> You're like, what are you talking about? So I'm going to unpack this as best as I can, but you're going to have to just bear with me each message because there's a lot to this. But if you can understand it, this is the power of God unto salvation. This is the gospel of, of Jesus. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus came to redeem our spirits so that we would be the new creation. He is the firstborn among many. When he came up out of that grave, he made it possible for your spirit to be born again, for your nature to be changed. But it only happens in your spirit. And it, does, it isn't until your mind starts to agree with who you are in the spirit instead of being so in tune with our flesh and with what we want and what we see and what we taste and what we hear, what we smell. Um, until we start tuning into who we are in the spirit because that's the part that gets born again. That is the part that's made brand new. That is the part that is the new creation is your spirit until we start acknowledging who we truly are because spirit is who we truly are. Our bodies, you guys look, our bodies are passing away. Our bodies are headed back to the dust. Every day from the day that you are born, you are one day closer to going back to the earth and into the dust. Our body is in a constant state of decay. <laughs> you guys are like, uh-uh, I don't agree with that. Well, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to say to you. And I'm really not trying to be a Debbie Downer because, listen, I, I'm, I'm not um, frustrated about getting old. I, I'm, but I'm not going to go there lightly and easily, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I can do to keep from aging or going to the grave too soon. Praise God. So anyways, spirit, soul, and body. You guys, this is a foundational truth because we have to identify with who we are in the spirit, not who we are in the flesh. Who we are in the flesh is a fleeting thing. You know, if you are this, <clears throat> if you are this supermodel during your 20s, and you see this a lot, uh, or if you are a pro football player, you know, and, and as life progresses, your body can't handle doing that or your your beauty starts to fade and while you know this world this day and age there's a lot of stuff we can do to help our beauty i'm not sure why my nose is itching somebody out there is thinking about me or talking about me whatever that means <laughs> when your nose itches <laughs> so um you know our bodies will wear out and then if our identity is who we are in the flesh then where are we left we're like like your whole identity is gone and, and we see that a lot. We see when people like, quote unquote, retire, they lose their identity. And suddenly they're like, who am I? See, this is why we have to identify with who we are in the spirit, because that is unchanging. That is forever the same. And we are one. We are the same spirit with Jesus. Oh, so good. So you, you might be like, what are you talking about? I've never heard this before. Maybe you have heard this before, but I am going to share some scripture with you to back this up. And I would encourage you guys, write this scripture down. Know where it's located in your Bible. Because, you know, even if you are to lead somebody into salvation, um, that initial supernatural, most amazing miracle on the place of, on the planet, um, you know, there's only one miracle where it actually says that, that the angels rejoice every time somebody comes home. Every time somebody gets born again, the angels actually celebrate in heaven. And that is because it's the greatest miracle on earth. 
Okay, so even if you lead somebody into, into that, right? And then they start asking questions, you gotta be able to back it up and show, and show people from the Word of God. And listen, the Word of God has to be our basis of truth. I mean, I can't even, I can't even start going down that road. If you're not gonna believe the Bible and all that is therein, then I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You know, we have to have a standard of truth. We have to say, this is a lie, this is a truth. Okay, so what's your standard of truth? Mine is the Bible and what God says. And the Bible is the infallible word of God. Yes, it's written by men, but it's inspired by the Holy Spirit through men. And it all lines up into this beautiful book of love, this beautiful love note from God to us. And it's powerful. <clears throat> so let's jump over to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, baby. You should know, not you should, I would just encourage you, write this down. Know where it's at. Go and look at it, you know, and and let God reveal this to you. There's so many scriptures in the Bible that talks about spirit, soul, and body, or there's so many scriptures in the Bible where if you don't understand if it's talking about your spirit or your soul or your body, that you get really confused. And this was a game changer for me. This was so powerful in my life, and I'm watching it be powerful in this individual's life that I'm telling you about. It is so awesome. It is so amazing because it takes me back to when I first heard the message and I was like, what? This is amazing. Like now it suddenly makes sense. Because remember, I was a born again Christian. I had read the Bible. I had done all that stuff, but none of it made sense. I didn't know any of this. And this is foundational if you are going to walk in victory, if you are going to use and you are going to see the power of God to salvation in every area of your life. This is the, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ and what he did for you and me and for every person. Doesn't mean every person reaps the benefit because they have to, you have to accept it in order for it to benefit you. Okay, so 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, and it says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That clearly lays it out. He says, Your whole spirit and soul and body. Your whole spirit, that's who we are, that's the part of us that lives forever and soul that's our mind our will our emotions our consciousness our there's so much in our soul mind will and emotions is generally how we sum it up but there's way more to it that is that is our mental part and then we have our body and that is very obvious what our body is and that's usually running the show <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm here to tell you that's very clear in that scripture, right? So let's jump over to uh, the Corinthians. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I think it's Second Corinthians. Um, yes. So... Here's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 is where I'm going to read, okay? And remember, we're talking about spirit, soul, and body. We're talking about the born-again experience. We're talking about um, understanding one of the most important foundations that you'll ever understand. And, and trust me, if you, know, you guys are lovers of Karis Bible College, if you watch Karis Bible College very much, you know this stuff. But I'm just sharing it in a different way. If you haven't... Um, there's so many resources that you can tap into, but I believe that I'm going to unpack this to the best of my ability in my own teaching style, right? And so, okay, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, how are you in Christ? That's that initial miraculous encounter that I was just talking about. It's confessing the Lord Jesus Christ and believing in your heart and you are saved. That's how you are in Christed, okay? So uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new and all things are of God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me keep going. Who hath uh, reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath 
given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Oh my goodness, there's so much to it. And I never understood it. And I'm here to tell you, if you don't understand spirit, soul, and body, you will not understand the scripture. And then what happens is, and this is what I did, is I would get, I got born again, and I had no idea what spirit, soul, and body was. And I heard, you're a new creation. Okay. And then I went back to church because I had sinned and I thought, okay, I'm going to get born again, again. So I said the sinner's prayer and I thought maybe this time it'll work. And I walk out and I have the same thoughts. Nothing in my life is born again. Nothing in my life is a new creation because I have the same thoughts that I had. I have the same desires that I had. I still do the dirty deeds that I did before. So it must not have worked is what we think when we don't understand spirit, soul, and body. It says, for whoever, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. What is a new creature? Your spirit man is a new creature. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's so good. And it says, um, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Your old spirit man is gone. It's dead. It's gone. It is crucified with Christ and it's buried. And now you come up. You, um, just like Jesus was raised from the dead, you are raised from the dead. And your spirit is now a new creation. Behold, all things are become new. Everything is instantly new and instantly perfect. And you are joined with Jesus, with God the Father, with the Holy Spirit, you all are one because now it's God's DNA and it's your DNA and you are a new creation. That is who your spirit man is. And it says, all things are of God and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Man, I got four minutes. I got four minutes to bust this out. <laughs> you are reconciled unto God through Jesus. Jesus was 100% God and Jesus was 100% man. And when he came to earth, he came to earth 100% God and 100% man. Okay. However, because he was 100% man, he had to learn how to walk. He had to, by faith, believe that he was the son of God because he was 100% man. Okay, so when, when he died and he rose again, now our spirits are able to be born again. We are a new creation when we believe on Jesus. Behold, all things are become new. Old things are passed away. This is the new creation living, but it's your spirit. And you're never going to experience the new creation of who you are until your soul lines up with who you are in your spirit. This is, and that's what I'm saying. All of my series that I talk to you about, I'm always talking about grabbing a hold of your thoughts because this dictates where you go. This dictates whether you win or lose. This dictates whether you succeed, succeed or fail. It's all up here. And likewise, this dictates who you are, who you become, who you live out in the flesh. If you just go with all your fleshly desires and everything it wants and all the lust thereof, you're going to find a mess. The word actually tells us if you sow to the flesh, you reap of the flesh corruption. You reap nothing good when you just live out whatever, whatever desire your body has. But see, when your mind and, and you're only living out every desire because your mind is so in tune with what your body wants. But see, when you get your mind in tune with who you are in the spirit, which has all self-control, temperance, which has all joy, love, goodness, kindness, meekness, um, joy, peace. I, I know I'm missing some of the, the fruit of the spirit, but that's who you are. It's not something that you're asking for from God. No, that is, that's who you are in your new creation, in your spirit. And, and so if you get your mind to start to line up with the truth of this is who I am, then pretty soon that's, how, that's what comes out. That, that's what you live out. You live out whatever is going on up in your mind. Man, there is so much to this. And I'm coming down to an end of my time. It's so frustrating. Um, because there's so much to it, but it's so powerful. So today I just want to, I just want to, um, 
complete this episode by just saying you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in your body. And so your soul is the determining factor of how your life is lived. So if your mind, your mind, your will, your emotions, that's what your soulish realm is, if that's plugged into who you are in the flesh and what you want at this moment and how you feel right now, and you know, all this stuff, if you're plugged into that, you're going to live a very frivolous, fruitful life. But if we can start getting our mind to focus on who we are in the spirit, and some of you guys are like, well, who are we? What is the new creation? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm going to take my time to go through who we are in our spirit, who this new creation is, what attributes does it have? Listen, we have no problem explaining the attributes we have in the flesh, right? Yeah, I got silver hair. Yeah, I got hazel eyes. Yeah, I got a couple of big front teeth, you know, <laughs> like whatever, whatever it may be. We have no problem describing that, right? And so I just want to encourage you today. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and end it right here. Um, in this brand new series of mine, episode two, and speaking on spirit, soul, and body. So if this message blessed you, and I would encourage you to keep tuning in as I go through this, because these are foundational truths. And once again, like in Romans chapter one, verse 16, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe. If you believe it, you are going to see power in your life unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So if this has blessed you, I would encourage you to share it. Um, make sure and, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you hit subscribe and the little bell, you will get a notification each and every time I post a new video. Otherwise, you can plan on, on a new video each and every Sunday morning here on my YouTube channel. You can also find me on Facebook. I'm still going strong there. Uh, I, I'm also sharing a uh, testimony. Uh, I, I'm not sure what episode we're on. I think we're probably on episode uh, three of my special testimony. You should check that out on Facebook. I'm definitely sharing it there. And um, like me, follow me there at Arrested and Free or give me a phone call at 970-919-0459. And you know, I'm recording these messages ahead of time because I'm traveling. So I'm gonna do my best to respond to your comments. And I want to thank you in advance for all your comments and your sincere encouragement. It does bless me. So have a great week and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye.